In this lesson, you will learn how to draw the spine in motion and three assignments to practice drawing the spine. We're going to draw the spine as a simple cylindrical shape. This will help us focus on the motion of the spine rather than trying to render the details. Rendering the details of the spine will help you get better at rendering, but that's not the priority of this lesson. Let's stick to learning the mechanics of the spine. That will be much more beneficial to your understanding of the human body and how to draw it. It will help you to invent poses from your imagination. Proportions of the spine. Before we get into posing the spine, we need to learn the proportions. So let's start with a drawing of the side view. I measure out four equal units. The lumbar section is one and a quarter units. The cervical section is three quarters of a unit. And that leaves two units for the thoracic section. I know that's kind of technical, so you can remember that the cervical is a bit less than one, lumbar is a bit more than one, and thoracic is exactly two. Everybody's individual proportions will vary a bit anyway. A thick curvy cylinder for the lumbar section. This section is not tilted forward or back in the neutral position. The top and bottom will be aligned vertically with a forward curve between. Now, of course, this is only in the neutral position. When the spine moves, they won't be aligned vertically. The thoracic section, however, is tilted backward. So the top will be farther back than the bottom, resulting in the backward lean of the rib cage. And again, this is for the neutral pose. The thickness of the cylinder will get thinner as we get closer to the top. Finally, the cervical section. It's the thinnest, and straightest of the sections. So that's the side view. Now let's draw it in three quarter view. The proportions will stay the same because I'm gonna keep the neutral pose. But now we need to draw the cylinders as three dimensional shapes rather than the flat shapes in the side view. To draw a cylinder, you have to imagine the ellipses of the top and bottom caps. If we were looking directly at the caps, it would be a circle. But since we're drawing a three-quarter view, the circle will be an elongated ellipse with an angle perpendicular to the direction the cap is facing. The bottom of the lumbar section points forward like this. So the angle of the ellipse will be perpendicular to that. Draw the length of the cylinder with the forward curve. And now the ellipse for the top cap will angle this way because the cap points backward. There's some basic ellipse perspective for you guys. That should be enough to draw a cylinder in perspective. I'll do the same thing for the thoracic section. It has the backward curve. Now notice how the curviness is just a tad straighter in this angle than from side view. The closer we get to the front view, the more it will become this straight line. As we rotate around the spine, the curves go from straight line in front view to very curvy in side view. Again, same thing for the cervical section. If you really want to challenge yourself, draw the spine in various positions. This is really helpful to imagine the spine moving in space. If you don't have experience with perspective, this will be a challenge, but it's a good challenge. Keep that in mind and do your best. If you struggle with it, the best way to improve is to keep working at it. Now let's add a sacrum to these spines. The height of the sacrum is about three quarters of the lumbar section. The bottom is farther back than the top. In fact, the whole pelvis has this same tilt. Since the rib cage has the opposite tilt, the torso has this curvature in the neutral position. The sacrum is very curvy. It starts thicker at the top and thin at the tailbone. From three quarter view, we have to add some width to the top of the sacrum. It's not a cylinder like the rest of the spine. It has a triangular shape. Starts with this thick top plane and comes to a point at the bottom. The three major masses. One of the most important things about the spine is that it moves the three major masses, the head, rib cage, and pelvis. So it makes sense to include the three masses while you practice drawing the spine. For this lesson, 
Let's simplify the pelvis into a cylinder, which is narrower at the bottom. I like to start with an ellipse for the top plane. Again, remember that the pelvis is tilted forward, so you'll see the top plane more than if the cylinder was vertical. The width of the pelvis cylinder is about the same as the length of the thoracic section of the spine. Two units. Find the sides, and then another ellipse for the bottom plane. In the next lessons on the pelvis and rib cage, I'll show you how to construct more descriptive volumes. For now, you can just stick to a cylinder for the pelvis and an egg-like shape for the rib cage. Finally, let's put a head on this guy. I'm a big fan of the Loomis method, so I'll put a Loomis head on there. If you don't know what that is, check out my video called How to Draw the Head from Any Angle. Now that we got the basics, let's go over the three assignments for this week. Draw Skelly, Trace Models, and Draw Models. I recommend doing them in that order because they get progressively harder. You can download the assignment images at proco.com slash how to draw the spine. The link is in the description. Exercise number one, draw Skelly. Let's do an example of the first exercise. In the assignment images, there are five images of Skelly in various poses. The challenge here is to simplify the bones into the simple volumes that I just showed you. This will help you get familiar with the shapes and their relationships. Exercise number two, trace models. Moving on to the second assignment, photo tracings. This is very much like the anatomy tracing assignment we did earlier in the course. Except this time, instead of analyzing the surface anatomy, we will be finding the skeletal structure underneath all the surface anatomy. So in exercise one, you got familiar with the shapes and the relationships of the spine and the three major masses. Now with the real models, those shapes are not so obvious. So you have to think a bit, figure out where they are. And exercise number three, draw models. Very similar to exercise two, except this time we're not tracing. You have to find the masses while keeping track of proportions and gesture. Do you remember those from the figure drawing course? This exists under the surface of this, but can you see it? Well, probably not at first. It's not gonna happen on your first try. You need to keep trying, keep searching for those masses, and slowly your ability to see under the surface will improve. All right guys, now it's your turn. Go ahead and download the assignment images from the link in the description. Post your drawings in the Anatomy Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash anatomy for artists. And check out proco.com slash anatomy for extended anatomy lessons and more examples of the assignments. That's proco.com slash anatomy. That's it, thanks for watching. If you're posting your drawings, use hashtag proco. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you wanna be updated about new videos, click this button to subscribe to the Proco newsletter.